when I can tomatoes, I put them right in the freezer till they're frozen like, like cue balls. That makes them easier to peel, and I'm going to show you how in just a minute. I promised you I'd show you how I peel my tomatoes. These are the frozen tomatoes in a strainer inside the bowl, and hubby's going to just pour boiling water right over top of all these tomatoes. And what happens is, is the boiling water, water will split those skins, and then I will show you how easy they are to peel. And there we go. We take a tomato from the bottom, because that's where the hot water is. That's a nice big one. And look at it, it's already slipping off. You just cut the stem end off, and that skin will slip right off. And I squeeze the water out, or some, and into the stock pot it goes. Anyway, I got work to do. We will be back. Okay, once your tomatoes are peeled and in your big pot, I like to cook them down in a double boiler. This is my canning pot that I'll be canning them in later. It has a wire rack in the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. It has a wire rack in the bottom and water. I'm a, I'm a big believer in doing things with a double boiler. That way things don't scorch and you can take your time cooking down your tomatoes. So while these are cooking down, it's a good time to wash your jars, rinse them, get your lids on to boil. And I have um, a great big huge cookie sheet in my oven lined with tin foil where I'm going to bake my jars. Now, as you can see here, the tomatoes that I'm heating up and cooking in the double boiler, there's a lot of water there. And I don't like a lot of water in my tomatoes, I like juice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently press this jug in and take some of the water out and dump it off down the sink. And I'm gonna do this till there's no, you know, I can't get any more water. Once these are hot, you can can them just the way they are with some salt. But I don't like chunks of tomatoes unless they're diced and I don't have the patience to dice all these. So once they're hot, I'm going to pop them in the blender and then I'm going to pour them into another pot as I puree them. Oops, sorry about the steam. And then, uh, I'm, then I'm going to jar them. Sorry. Oh, okay. So what I'm doing now is, like I said before, I don't like big clumps of tomato. So I'm just, now that I've poured off a lot of the water, you can see how nice and thick this is in here. Um, I'm just, I don't have an immersion blender, Noreen, <laughs> but I, I'm sure I'll get one. But I just give it a couple of pulses and into this pot it goes. I'll have hubby come over. And that's how nice and thick that is. That's ready for canning. So I'm just going to heat, when I'm done pureeing, I'm going to heat this up and we'll fill the jars and we'll boil back them. I know I'm a mess. Thanks, dear. Yeah. Okay. okay, folks, those are my jars. My, lid, my lids are in the pot ready to be boiled with a little bit of vinegar in there. I always put a little, as you can see, I'm preparing to can two canners full of jars because I do have more tomatoes in the freezer. And there's my lids. Now these jars and lids are all brand new, but that does not make them clean. Okay, so I take them out of the box and I put a little bit of baking soda in them all and I scrub them with hot water and a brush and I rinse them out and then I bake them in the oven and I bake them in the oven at 215 degrees for 15 minutes and then I just turn it down to warm and I keep them in the hot oven until um, I'm ready to use them. Anyway, we'll be back when we're ready to fill them. Okay, we're ready to can. As you can see, I've got my jars in the oven, staying hot. Now, if you look at this, we have, as I showed you earlier, we've pressed some of the water off, we've pureed the tomatoes. This is the best way I know to get a bushel and a half of tomatoes and all its goodness in one big canning pot or stock pot. Now, I'm going to stir in about a half a cup of pickling salt. Now, someone asked me about adding ascorbic acid. 
I, you don't need to. Usually tomatoes are fairly, uh, are really acidic fruit. However, if you are canning those yellow tomatoes or those low acid tomatoes, then you may want to add like, I would say to a pot this size, maybe a quarter cup of, of uh, lemon juice concentrate. But for this, we don't need to. Now we're just going to fill up this jar. And as you can see, honey's going to pan on my pots. I have two canning pots ready to go. And I don't use those basket type racks because they're just a pain in the butt and I can get more jars in this way. I just put a wire rack and a canning rack in the bottom. And we're just going to take our funnel out. Always, always, always wipe the rim of your jar even if it's spotless. Now I always add also, and we're going to put our lid on there, I also add uh, a splash of vinegar to my boiling water for my lids and to my pots. This stops because I'm on a well, I have calcium in my water, and this stops the jars from being cloudy. Okay, I will be back when these canners are full. Okay, here's my two, four, six, seven jars in my smaller canner. And as you can see, the water comes right up over the edge of the jars. And once they begin to boil, I will, I will uh, process these for 25 minutes. And when I get this one filled, when the timer goes off for these, I will check and see how much time's left and I will process these for 25 minutes. One down, one to go. Okay, my bigger canner now has 12 pints in it, Canadian pints that is, which is about two cups a jar. And my smaller canner has the seven. Now when the timer goes off for this one, I will automatically backtrack um, 15 minutes because that's how long it's taken in between. I'll backtrack the timer another 15 minutes to process these ones. Okay, the small canner has been, uh, timer's gone off, and I've reset it for an extra 15 minutes for the big canner because it was 15 minutes late going in. And I'm taking these out of the canner, and I'm going to let them cool on a towel, and pretty soon they'll start making little pinging noises, and that means the lids are popping down. If for any reason your lid does not pop down, thus creating a good seal, you can re-boil bath them. Check your, your, your jar lid and re-boil bath them. If it doesn't seal after boiling it a second time, put it in your fridge and use that one first. Anyway, this is Bev from My Half Acre Homestead. No, it's not. This is Bev and Howie from Our Half Acre Homestead saying harvest time. you got to love it.